Just feel the same as they do in here. So if you're worried about small children, there's nothing to worry about. If they touch anything, they're not going to burn themselves. There's nothing that gets hot. The door of the oven is made of glass, and when the door is closed, it get, does get up to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And we say that gets hot enough to keep your neighbor's dog from eating your pot roast. I mean, uh, it will get hot enough so any animal that's out during the daytime will be repelled by the heat. I was on the group this afternoon that we have um, a lot of ovens in different countries, and we have a big problem with baboons in South Africa. And uh, baboons don't get set up in the heat. They've got fingers, so they know how to get into it. But unless you have baboons in your backyard, you don't have to worry too much about uh, you know, the animals getting in here, because any animal that's out during the day will be repelled by heat. Um, the uh, reflectors on the oven are made of a highly polished anodized aluminum. It's 86% reflect reflective, so 86% of the light that shines on here. And it has a rating that it could be in the sun from sunup to sunset, 365 days a year for 15 years before it would ever lose its reflectivity. So again, you know, if you cook, even if you use it a lot, you're not going to have it out from sunup to sunset every day. So there's, again, it's, it's just about impossible to wear it out. The um, frame that kind of holds everything together on the oven is just made of wood. It's just a kiln drive. Oops, I got this um, locked in place here. It's a kiln-dried popular wood, and um, we stained it. And then actually the most important part of the oven is this black gasket. And I'm trying to do this kind of backwards of the way you should, just to make it easier to see. But this gasket here is kind of the guts of the whole oven. That forms a totally tight seal to hold the air inside the oven. But if the food outgasses, it allows gas to escape out the back of the oven while the air is held in. So that's, that's actually the most important part of it. It does have a built-in thermometer that lets you know the temperature. And I mentioned the leg in the back, and one thing I, I should mention is that the leg in the back does have a little dimple or a little indentation drilled in it that matches this pin. So if you notice, there's a little hole down here at the very bottom matching the pin. Sometimes people say they spin it around and can't find where the pin goes, you know, in the hole. And um, there is this little indentation that allows you to know it. Some people, to make it easy, this comes right out, as you saw, just take a ruler and draw a line with a red magic marker from here to here. And then anytime you're spinning around, you can always see that red line. So, um, and if you're in an area that's prone to wind, what you might want to do is take a a piece of scrap wood, 2x4, two 2x6, two roughly the length of the oven, doesn't have to be exact, and drill a hole in it about the diameter of the shaft. And if you stick this shaft into a block of wood with a hole in it, it will give you much greater stability on a windy day. So um, when the oven's sitting flat on the ground, it's not too bad in the wind, and the reflectors are designed to let air pass through and they kind of vibrate, I mean, move back and forth. But if you have the leg extended, sometimes it could blow over and sticking this into a block of wood will extend, you know, uh, allow you to use it even when it's a little more windy. So, <clears throat> when you're cooking in a sun oven, as I said, the whole chamber is the same temperature. So a lot of times people look at it and say, boy, I don't think I could cook for my family. I've got too big a family to cook in there. It's too small. Um, I don't know, you know, I'd really be able to use it. Well, keep in mind that because the chamber is, excuse me, because the, the entire chamber equalizes temperature and is the same temperature, you can actually do a lot more with it than what you would think as far as you know cooking in it. Just to illustrate, I'm going to take this leveling tray out. The leveling tray is designed to come out for two reasons. One is, if you spill anything in the oven, you just take this out and wash it in the kitchen sink. The other is, if you want to expand the size of the oven, you don't have something that's liquid, and you want to use it to make the chamber bigger, you can take it out. But um, I mentioned the work we do in Haiti, and in Haiti, um, the, the main food staple that people eat is beans and rice. It's culturally impossible to ever get a Haitian woman to soak her beans overnight the way we would do it here. So um, when you put the beans inside the pot, um, there it takes, generally the beans are going to take about four times longer to cook than the rice will. Now that's their main food staple, and when they get variety, they get rice and beans. So it's either beans or rice and rice and beans, and that's about 85% of what they eat in Haiti. So we teach the women there to take the pot of beans, put it in, and when the beans are about two-thirds done, take a pot of rice and put it on top of it, and then use the top pot for the lid for the bottom pot, and then you can cook two things at the same time. Now, in a country like Haiti or most places outside of the United States, frankly, 
people eat their evening meal quite a bit later in the day than we do here, so they can cook in the afternoon sun, leave the food in it, and then eat it at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the evening, and the food's going to be moist and warm. So you can cross stack pots. Um, I mean, stack pots on top of each other if you want to cook more than one thing. I'm going to talk about water purification in a little while, but um, if you wanted to pasteurize or purify water in the sun oven, while you were cooking, you could take two quart-sized canning jars and put them right next to the pot, for example, and do it at the same time. Or, some people have uh, water filters that they've gotten for preparedness. If you don't need water for drinking, what's nice is, if you think about in preparedness, how would you keep water to do your dishes? You could take and, again, put a couple quart jars of water next to the um, pot here, and you could be heating water to do your dishes when it's done, or heating water if you want to take a sponge bath. So. Um, if you had no energy, the concept of heating water for dishes or for bathing is something that would take a lot of energy. And if you did that with propane, you could really, you know, um, it would cost a lot of money where you can do it in the sun oven. Um, one of my favorite things to make in the sun oven is corn on the cob. It's about the simplest thing to make, and it is really, really delicious. If you take um, corn, you leave it in the husk, you wash it, and then you just set it in the oven when it's damp, when it's wet from washing it. Um, I could put, say, two ears of corn on this side, two ears of corn on this side, two or three, four ears of corn on the top, and be cooking that with a pot at the same time. With the, with the corn on the cob, by the way, if you just wash it, whether you put it on top of a pot or you just you know, um, fill the shelf with it, wait, all you do is wash it, leave it in there, and anywhere from 35 minutes to two hours, you have perfect corn. What I mean by that is you'd be done in 35 minutes, but if you left it in two hours, it wouldn't hurt anything. And if you take in the husk, leaving the husk moist, and by doing that, what happens is the, um, the husk and the is serving as your pot, but it, your corn is so moist. I mean, it is just unbelievably moist. You put a little bit of salt and butter on it, and it really, really is delicious. Or if I wanted to, I was making, say, a, a roast in here, and I wanted to have baked potatoes. There's no reason I can't line the sides here with baked potatoes. Um, some people put them in foil. I find if you just take some baked potatoes, just stick the fork in it, you know, not put a couple holes in it first, and put it in, you'll, you'll really enjoy the taste of the potatoes. Again, they'll be real moist if, if you put them in, but you can use aluminum foil. If you use aluminum foil to wrap your potatoes and you have them outside of the pot, then it's best to take a dark dish towel and put it on top of it, and that will keep the glare from coming out. We always say if you're going to use aluminum foil, put the shiny side towards your food. And if you do use aluminum foil, then um, it is best to try to cover it up because the light will reflect out and it will decrease the you know, efficiency of the cooking inside the oven. So when we're cooking in the sun oven, the most efficient kind of pot to use are these black enamel pots. The reason that the enamel pots are most efficient is they're thin and they're dark. And because they're thin, they don't take a lot of energy to heat. As I said, the whole chamber equalizes temperature. So if I preheat the oven, say, up to 300 degrees, and I put food in, when I open the door and put the food in, the temperature is going to drop, and then it's going to rise evenly. Now, the more food or the more mass of a pot I put in, the more the temperature is going to drop, and then it's got to come back up. So a thin pot will cook much faster than a thick pot. So using these enamelware pots, which are dark, and of course the darkness absorbs the heat, but the sun of, um, but the actual um, uh, the thinness of the pot allows it then to be able to um, up, uh, come up to temperature very quickly, and it works real well. Great! It seems like everybody's getting hot, so maybe that will. Fantastic! <laughs> So, now I can get a lot more hot air going here. <laughs> yes, we'll take this question, then we'll hold the question at the end. Go ahead. Okay, I was just wondering if there's no sun. Okay, um, you, the rule of thumb in using a sun oven is you have to have enough sun to cast a shadow. So if you don't have enough sun to cast a shadow, it's not going to be a good day to use a sun oven. Um, so a sun oven isn't going to meet all of your needs. But if you think about it, now that article that... Um, appeared earlier this year in April you know, that, that we have copies up here. If you didn't get them, please pick one up. Um, talks about the whole issue of fuel storage. And um, one thing I didn't realize until I read that article was that when you, if you store more than a certain amount of propane, you void your homeowner's insurance. So the amount of propane you can store is very limited. Um, if you go on the internet and you research charcoal and you try to find out what the shelf life of charcoal is, you can decide in advance what you want it to be, and you'll find somebody who will agree with you on 
mean, you'll see on the internet, you'll see an article that say the shelf life of charcoal is a year, 